I think there is another important aspect to the healing process. We like to feel that life is going to be meaningful and work out in a way that makes sense. All of us have a belief system about ourselves, about other people, and about life. For many, though I realize by no means all, that may include a faith in God and a relationship with Him and with others, and a confidence about what happens after death. People who may not think of themselves as religious recognize a spiritual element to life. There are times when we realize that we can no longer live our lives by accident, that we have to reach beyond ourselves to find truth and meaning. Spirituality is a bridge between feelings of helplessness and a renewed sense of meaning, purpose, and hope. I think in a time of crisis, such as a death or a life-threatening situation, we have six major spiritual needs. The first is re-examining our beliefs. Death, after all, is the final test of one's beliefs and practices. Second, reconciling our life choices. Three, evaluating our lifetime contribution and our legacy. Four, examining our relationships, especially the ones where we gave and received love. Five, exploring our beliefs about life after death. And number six, discovering meaning. When we have a significant loss, some of the assumptions we've made about our world and even about God can be challenged and changed, shaken and even violated. Part of the grief process is helping us discover new meanings and new ways of looking at things. And generally, that's not easy. Consider this grief guideline. We can find meaning even when the circumstances don't seem to make sense. Well, as a pastor, what, what struck me at, from the onset was the, her death just shook my faith to its roots. And here it was, in the midst of all this, my wife died. And I'm like, God, you, you aren't who you said you were. Mm -hmm. And you don't do what you say you're going to do. You lie to me. Yet I'm a pastor. And within three weeks, I'm back in the pulpit preaching every Sunday mm. and not believing some of the stuff I'm preaching. And I got to a point where I just said to God, I, I don't like you anymore. You're not my friend. Um, just leave me alone. Uh, and then every Saturday night, I'd say, but you know, I actually have to preach something to Mark. I kind of need a little help here. <laughs> <laughs> And he'd give me these wonderful sermons I never studied for, and I'd be preaching these amazing sermons, and then as soon as I'm done, I'd walk out the pulpit and say, leave me alone. And when one says God is faithful, that's not just words to me anymore. He just, I tried to chase him away because I, I felt abandoned, mm -hmm. and I wanted, to f I wanted him to abandon me, and he wouldn't. I did everything possible to chase him away, and he just refused to go away. So after a while, I kind of said, well, you want to go anywhere, are you? No, well, then, okay, then maybe we can talk. And then, so it improved. It, 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 I can't say improved. It, it enhanced. It, it, it built up my faith so that when I say what I say now, it's not just talk. I mean, it, it was, I believed it all along, but I have this new experiential knowledge of who God is. And again, in terms of how that has unfolded and, and how I do what I do, um, I can... When I speak to people, when I, when I counsel them, when we talk, I can say, listen, I can, you know, it's, it's not, th this is what I believe, this is what I know. For myself, it has given me such a deeper understanding of loss. Also, the, the inadequacy of the help out there. Mm -hmm. Because I, I work with people all the time, and there's, they come in and sometimes the bottom line is the loss that they've had somewhere in their life that they were never allowed to grieve mm -hmm. they weren't given permission and they didn't know what grieving was about but I should be over it and I'm saying well who who tells you you should be over it 
And so it's about validation. I believe so much in people. I believe in the beauty because I can see I've got the good fortune of being in a situation where I see a person that even the person can't see. And mm. it's about pulling that person out and saying, you have all the rights that everybody else has in this lifetime. Mm. And so I understand what pain is. I understand and it seems like every crisis that comes in my life moves me for further in another direction. See, what I like to add is what has happened, I, I, I appreciate life more, I appreciate mm. people more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have experienced loss. I have seen others experience loss. And there is there are few things there are few regrets in life that are more difficult to deal with than the regret of not having been able to tell someone something mm -hmm. and then they died. Mm -hmm. Or you got mad with them and the last word they heard from you was you screaming at them. Mm -hmm. To just really appreciate those you have around about you, the relationships that you have, don't take them for granted. And just just practice on a regular basis. I mean, I do this in premarital counseling. One of the first things you do is to try to improve communication. We say, you know, the first thing I tell the couple is, okay, every day I want you to find something good to compliment your, your fiancé on. Mm -hmm. No matter how your day has been, you find five minutes and you tell them something good. And you just keep building on that. So whatever it is, as, as, as difficult as life can get and as miserable as you, those around you may want to be, because, of course, we... We, we, we get to choose our friends, but not necessarily our families. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but we still have to love them and just really appreciate the good that, that is there. When I think also, for me, it gave me the power to say no to things because I was always a person who would agree to do everything. And, and there, were, there were finally things that I've been able to say, no, I'm, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to spend my life doing things I don't want to do anymore. And I want to do some of the things that, that are more meaningful and that maybe are not structurally things that I really want to do because uh, I always would get sucked into doing everything so mm -hmm. <laughs> I think maybe in terms of growth that's something that um, that's that's helpful has been helpful for me you may be struggling to find meaning in a situation that seems to make little sense some things in life don't seem to have a lot of meaning there's a tragic accident a natural disaster an act of violence or abuse. You see pictures of people starving and children suffering. Bad things do happen to good people. Think about it. How can it be meaningful when a drunk driver causes an accident that takes the life of a little child? Maybe it's just me, but I find it increasingly difficult to see a lot of meaning in some of these situations and circumstances. Oh, there's always someone with their cliches and easy answers, but if we're really honest, it just ain't that simple. A friend of my mum and dad's um, rang my mum shortly after dad had died and, and said to her, this particular friend is a pastor and he felt that during some prayer that he'd sort of he said he couldn't have placed a voice but he felt this sort of very strong feeling that my dad was reassuring him that it was all okay and that he was okay and he'd arrived um with with god and um this this friend rang my mum and said you know i wanted to tell you this and uh, my mum didn't find that helpful at all poor guy probably thought he was being kind to her and she just said well if if that's the case why did um why did Douglas not talk to me why would he tell somebody else um so it kind of backfired what was supposed to have been helpful really caused her to be very upset I still have unanswered questions about my wife's death why do good people die prematurely and my biggest question, why did two little boys have to grow up without a mother? It just doesn't seem fair. And the fact that they had a dad who cared and looked after them, and by the way, that they turned out just great, still doesn't make the event itself meaningful. Good may come out of certain things, but that doesn't make the thing good in itself. Why do we always have to think that everything is meaningful? In my own life, I've had to accept that life isn't always fair, and everything that happens is not necessarily meaningful. 
But I've also learned that even though certain things may not be meaningful, that does not imply that my life doesn't have meaning. We may not be able to find meaning in the circumstances, but can I find enough faith to believe that there is meaning for my life, even though some of the circumstances may not make sense or seem to have any obvious meaning? Rather than looking at the situation and asking why or what the meaning of the event is, we should ask, how is my life meaningful even in the light of tragedy? Acceptance means being able to believe that my life is meaningful even though it may not have been perfect or turned out exactly the way I might have liked it to. At first I prayed that mum would get better, but as time went on, I found myself praying that she would have a good death, whatever that means. I didn't want her to suffer, and I prayed that the end would be peaceful. In that, God answered my prayers. Sometimes we pray that God will answer our prayers by changing the circumstances, but sometimes He answers us by enabling us if not to change the situation, at least to change how we respond to the situation, giving us the strength to survive and to reorganize. As Harold Kushner puts it, in the final analysis, the question of why bad things happen to good people translates into some very different questions. No longer asking why something has happened, but asking ourselves, how will we respond? What will we intend to do now that it has happened? Embrace life. Enjoy life. Uh, help people out who are going through harder times, who do not understand the meaning of some things or what happens to them. Uh, I think this is what has taught me, I think, the most is um, we must share with with people about uh, how to handle situations. Uh, life is not fair. No, it's not fair. Is when we pick ourselves up, we can. Life gives us a lot of body blows, um, but it's picking ourselves up, which makes it just so much wonderful and so much rewarding. So the ultimate question of meaning is not what happens to you in life but what you do with what happens. A life-changing event often allows us to reinterpret some of our long-held ideas and to find new meanings that allow us to accept what has occurred, even though we may not fully understand. As Viktor Frankl put it, to live is to suffer. To survive is to find meaning in the suffering. That's acceptance. I don't have all the answers, but I can affirm the meaning of my life anyway. I may not see or understand it all, but I can affirm my faith and belief in the truths and values I hold dear. I don't understand. I don't like it. But that doesn't stand in the way of my believing that there is a meaning, even though I may not be able to see it right now. I can trust that my life is meaningful, even though some of the things that have happened don't seem to make much sense. Life is meaningful, death is a part of life, and it's, it, it can be beautiful.